Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new, not an F1 2020 video actually, uh, in quite a while, for the first time in quite a while. Uh, this is my first race uh, for Mercedes uh, in Formal E. And um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one because it's an R Factor 2, not really used to that. Also, I'm in qualifying 1, which is less grip as you can hear in a second. Okay, Group 1. Marius Golombek, Nikodem Wisniewski, Kelvin van der Linde, Frederik Rasmussen, Jano Opmeer and Jaroslav Honzik. Out now, please. On track. Okay, what's this? That's qualifying Group 1. So yeah, qualifying Group 1 is going to have quite a lot less grip than the last qualifying group. Uh, there are four qualifying groups uh, containing six, six people each. So it's going to be a tough one, uh, I will be happy with a top 10 as I'm not really used to R Factor 2 yet and also another car, it's quite a lot different uh, driving wise compared to F1. Alright, we only get one lap and also we're only going to get one lap in qualifying so that's going to be really tough uh, to get a lap together and well it's the same for everyone so uh, in that perspective, it doesn't really matter, but still, it's really risky, really tricky. Especially because I'm not really comfortable with the game yet. But, um, yeah. As you can see, I have to warm up my tires really aggressively. As you only get one outlap, and then you straight away have to go for it. So you have to be super aggressive warming up the tires, because it's such a short track. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy. A lot of people are also backing off in the last sector. Uh, which makes it a bit more tricky because you really need the wall outlap to warm up the tires and the brakes. So, yeah, that's why I'm so aggressive. It it ruins your tires a little bit because you get quite a lot of tire wear from warming up like this. But, yeah, it's the only way to basically uh, get them up to temperature before uh, your lap starts. This is uh, the New York City e pre track, by the way. Um, there are going to be six races in this championship. Uh, every every Thursday, uh, I'll be streaming them on my Twitch. So um, yeah, let's head into the lap. Uh, here's the main straight braking just after 100 meters. Uh, there are no gears, only one gear, so that's why you won't see me upshifting and downshifting. And then heading through turn two and three, missed the apex a little bit in turn three, uh, but the rest was pretty solid. Not gonna lie. Um, <sighs> I think I'm gonna go purple uh, in a second through sector one. Uh, Freddy Rasmussen is ahead of me. As you can see, I got a lot of understeer through there, first corner of sector two, which cost me quite a lot of time probably around uh, around this track, especially the street track. And on this game, you just need a lot of rotation around uh, tight corners. So probably lost a little bit of time there, but then around the hairpin, I get really good rotation managed to get a power down quite nicely and then this is such a tricky corner easy to lock the right front but I managed to get through it quite cleanly through the chicane also need to be smooth to not lose the rear of the car and then through the last corner I was really hesitant with the throttle as you can hear but coming across the line it's a one as you can hear a one ten point one uh, I'm not gonna lie, there were no big mistakes, but last corner wasn't. Yeah, last corner I probably lost like around one tenth, uh, being so hesitant on throttle. But um, in the end, it's gonna be P8. So we're P6 and P8. I was purple sector one actually. Okay, thank you everybody. That's qualifying done. Uh, we're gonna stay in this session for a little bit longer just to allow for the pole position interview. Um, so, Erhan, make sure you're available for that. But we'll be advancing to warm up shortly. So, yeah, on the end result, you can see a P9 there, but Freddy Rasmussen did two laps, which is not allowed. You're only to d allowed to do one lap. So, uh, he's starting P16. I'm starting P8. My teammate right in front of me, who was in the last qualifying group, uh, I think I ended up being around two tenths of pole. But anyway, let's head into the race. Five red lights, full throttle. And away we go for the New York City e -pre, uh first race for me in the Formula E series. Heading into turn one, um, I struggled, because I'm driving on single screen, I struggled to see uh, oh, I squeezed. who was next to me. 
So view was not ideal in cockpit cam with single screen. You see, I touched uh, Lucas Muller slightly there. Um, I thought I was completely ahead of him, but I wasn't. But no major crash, crash um, right there. And heading through here, we're gonna have to do a lot of lift and coast this race. Otherwise, you will simply not make it. Oh. Someone spun. So I'm gonna take it easy uh, in the first lap because I want to save my battery straight away. Also, in the first lap, you'll be using a oh, lot I can more see where I'm going on. than um, on average over the race because you start the race basically from a standing start, which means you have no momentum going into the lap. So the first lap is going to be over 6%, I think 6.5%, and you need around 4.7, 4.75 on average over the over the whole race per lap to make it to the finish. Uh, the race is 25 minutes, which means 21 laps around this track, and usually we can break around 100 meters, just after 100 meters, and now I start lifting at just past 200 meters, and we basically need to do that for every big straight and even on the small little straights like here you have to lift quite easy quite quite fast i would say because um, otherwise you're not gaining that much time from it but you're still losing quite a lot of battery you can see there again uh, lifting just after 200 meters going into sector two so also rear tires are going to be a little bit of a struggle sometimes uh, towards the end of the race but with all the lift and coast, and if you take it a little bit easy, uh, it's not going to be too big of a problem uh, if you look after them. So, yeah, I'm behind um, Colin Beck right now uh, on P8, as I didn't really get a hairpin right there. So, yeah, you might not know these people, but they're really solid R-Factor drivers. So it's going to be quite a struggle to beat them um, this race. Of course, next race I'll have a lot better preparation than I had. Um, not that much preparation for this because of all the Mercedes announcements. All drivers attack mode is now enabled. So yeah, next few races should be uh, slightly better with pace. Uh, I expect others to improve as well, but yeah, I'm still quite new to our factor. As you just heard, attack mode is now enabled. You cannot use it in the first two laps. And right here on the right, on the exit, uh, that's where the activation is. So you have to move over to the right drive through the ports uh, that are marked on the track and then uh, you basically have slightly more power for two minutes but I'm not gonna use it yet I'm gonna save up my battery you can see uh, on the top I use 4.43 uh, on that lap as I just put my personal best to the race I moved on to the start of lap 14 as in between absolutely nothing happened all I was doing was saving battery and making sure that I was gonna make it to the end of the race you can see now I'm gonna use my first attack mode and right. you have first attack mode you have to use both of them otherwise you're gonna get disqualified uh, the person ahead of me has used one already and the person in P6 Risto Capet uh, has used both already and you have so much more power uh, when you have attack mode on, you can see the delta on top, how much I'm gaining just in a little straight, easy three tenths already. So, it's going to be interesting to see uh, where I can overtake um, Colin Beck uh, in the next one and a half lap. Running through here, you can see I've already made up so much time, I'm already almost seven and a half tenths up. And I planned to make, I was planning to make the move into turn one. As he is probably going to lift and coast, um, and I'm planning to not to, so I can go down the inside as I put my personal best, that which is a 112.3. So going down the inside there, uh, up to P7, and now I'm going to hunt down Risto Capet for P6 as I get a big snap of oversteer through there, probably asking a little bit too much for my rear tires in the past lap. Alright, there's quite a lot there, not going to lie. So yeah, an average of 5.2 on, uh, on that lap, 5.25, which is a little bit too much uh, at the moment. But once attack mode is over, uh, the average is going to go down again. And also with attack mode, I can still save a little bit. I just used a lot because I really want to get past um, Colin back in on that lap or into turn one, I mean. So yeah, now I'm going to save up a little bit. I'm probably not going to get past 
uh, Risto Capet um, this attack mode anymore, but I shouldn't forget I still have one remaining and he doesn't. So it's going to be interesting also to see, because you can see P1 is really far ahead and it's going to be interesting to see if more people on the front are um, going to get in trouble with battery. I know I'm quite safe, there are five laps remaining and I have around 24% battery left. So I can use quite some uh, in the coming laps, just need to stay just under 5% per lap. I think uh, I can use around 4.8% per lap from here on. So five minutes remaining, one more attack mode. So yeah, five more minutes remaining of this race. Uh, also, five more laps remaining. As I'm really cro close behind Risto Capet now. I'm 1.4 seconds out of Kolenbeck uh, with a P8. Um, I think towards the end of the race, Risto is going to get in trouble with battery as he pushed quite hard at the start of the race to keep up with the top five. But anyway, um, I had to save a little bit of battery in those laps, that's why Kolenbeck is getting closer towards me again. As I really want to push on the last lap and not get in trouble um, towards the finish line basically. Which is tough of course, because you need to keep no decent pace. No further action for Kevin Siggy and Graham Carroll. That was a 1.13.94. Yeah, that's really tough of course, because you need to keep decent pace and save battery which is quite the trick of course so now still behind Risto Capet I'm not sure I'm gonna use attack mode no I'm not gonna use it yet I'm gonna wait one more lap uh, before I will use it so quite solid sector one as you can see uh, just over one ten down as that was with my attack mode so obviously more power the guy ahead of me has no more attack mode so it's gonna be interesting so yeah, the guy ahead of me, no attack mode, but Colin back behind me still has one remaining as well. So he might be a threat um, in the coming laps as well, if I don't get past Risto Kepe uh, fast enough. But anyway, um, I should start using my attack mode uh, at the start of the next lap. As I get a little bit of oversteer to there, rear tires are starting to give up a little bit. As you can see, I start struggling more and more. Uh, on traction zones, but now starting in the last attack mode now. That was a one thirteen point seven three. As I now start the final three laps of the race, uh, Golden back still one point three seconds behind me. I use four point six three percent on that lap, so that's quite good. Uh, not gonna lie. And now I pull over to the right to activate my attack mode to have a go at Risto Cape who is pretty defenseless I think so at this point as I'm gonna have so much more um, power coming from those batteries so I, I wasn't sure where to make the move I was thinking about the hairpin as I think he knew as well that he wasn't gonna stand a chance so going into the hairpin he took a really weird line but I think uh, he was hoping what the fuck is that line man uh, as I get hit in the hairpin as well uh, he took a really weird line, so I think he was trying to say uh, you can pass me here, but I didn't really get the message um, if he was trying to. So now I'm gonna make the move into turn one, or that's what I plan to. But because I stayed behind Risto for uh, a few corners, uh, you can see Kolenbeck has caught up to me by seven tenths. So now going into turn one, I'm not gonna lift and coast, and I'm gonna go down the inside as. Risto does manage to stay ahead of Gollenbeck for now, but uh, he's probably gonna get overtaken on this little straight as Gollenbeck has so much more battery. So now four tens up on my PB, but I'm not gonna uh, push for a personal best here as I need to make it to the end of the race as well. So now uh, next person up ahead is Manuel Biancolila, who has saved up absolute loads of battery for the last uh, two laps. He, after lap one, I think he was P2, and then he just started saving and dropped back a little bit. But now he has a lot of battery to use again, of course. So, yeah, there's a group of three people ahead of me. 
Uh, so that's going to be interesting because if they start battling, we might catch up. And my attack mode is going to end this lap, which uh, is a shame because otherwise I would probably have been able to have a go with the top three. But yeah, now going through the last corner, going into the last lap of the race, if I'm correct. Uh, I've caught up just over a second to the top three. You can see, you can see they go three wide into turn one. I'm making a mistake. As I lost the rear slightly on entry, guy behind me has a dot left. He yeah. saved really well. I I thought the guy behind me saved really well, but um, you can see at the end of this lap, he he didn't. So that was a miscalculation by me. I didn't have any communication uh, with Bono, uh, my teammates or uh, or engineer at the time because we had trouble um, setting up a communication just before the race. Uh, as we didn't know, we had to be in a Discord call with formally. But anyway, let's head into uh, the, the hairpin for the final time. Um, I get overtaken by interesting way of overtaking. Holy shit. Column back right there. Um, so yeah, lost one position there as he forced me a little bit wide. But that's probably just the way... Um, of driving in formally still have to get used to it a little bit as you can be a lot more aggressive i think so uh with these cars so yeah uh, i'm used to f1 of course so i think he didn't really do anything wrong maybe a little bit aggressive but uh, oh interesting to see if that's gonna be a penalty well it ended up not being a penalty which i can fully understand of course so yeah anyway um in the end graham carroll got a penalty so i got p6 and my teammate Bono got P4. So, not gonna lie, uh, a little bit disappointed. I didn't get P5, but in the end, it was my first um, Formula E race. Uh, first time participating in the championship on R Factor 2. And uh, I think P6 is uh, a solid start to this championship. Uh, from next week on, I hope to be fighting with the top three for, or even for the win. Um, so, yeah, I hope. Uh, next race will be slightly better but uh we just have to wait and see how the pace is then and um hope you guys enjoyed something uh, a little bit different than f1 2020 for once uh, i'll be uploading this formally highlights uh, every week i live stream it on twitch every thursday unfortunately it's at the same time as my uh, league race so i can do the league race uh for the next five six weeks so that's a bit unfortunate, but I might be doing uh, actually overall on Sunday. Uh, so I have at least a league race to do. Uh, also on Sunday there will be the virtual GP. I'll be doing the sprint race uh, before I uh, help Stoffel uh, Van Dorn um, as his race engineer for the future race. So that's going to be interesting as well. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And see you guys next time. Ciao.